We get involved with um, the, the industry in very different ways. We are known by some as brokers. This form here has a real brokerage uh, a twinge to it. But depending on where you go, there may be a whole core of CCIMs that are maybe a little more core, uh, corporate and institutional. We have folks that are bankers. We have folks that are lawyers. We have about 45% are non-traditional street broker folks. So it's still more than half of brokers, but the rest are representatives from, uh, in fact, I was just kidding with Ed, we have uh, Bob Balsarek is a CCIM in Florida. He happens to be the director of real estate for Publix. So in the grocery space, that's, you know, it's a pretty good group. Walmart, we're pushing 20 and change designees are in the Walmart real estate department. Walmart, largest real estate company in the world. We forget that sometimes, right? But Walmart loves our program. General Electric, um, Brandywine, Liberty Property Trust, TIAA CREF. We have CCM designees in these companies, Prologis, okay? And, and I bring that up to you to say that as here, bigger deals, more money as the theme. One of the things that I identified early on in my career as just being a traditional street broker, maybe a little more analytical in my practice, uh, do a little more consulting, things like that. But I got involved in CCIM in my local market. And then from there, I jumped and I went to some stuff like this. I would show up in Chicago and meet a whole bunch of people that are outside my market. And I would create relationships with people that all went through the spanking machine, right? These are all people that are CCIMs, all right? Or they know the program. And, and what was happening was I found that when I was a CCIM, or wasn't a CCIM, I held the CCIMs in the highest regard. And then when I got my CCIM, I said, wow, how do I get to know more of these CCIMs? But what I see a lot around the country is a CCIM will maybe get the designation as a pinnacle of their career. But really the value is to see it as an, creating an opportunity for you to advance your career and advance your business prospects and change the way you do business to make more money. Now this is business. If you have a real philanthropic way about going to your real estate business, you have one of these nonprofit versions, then I guess this doesn't matter. But we're, it's okay to be in it for the money, right? And so when you are a part of this group, there are some 9,000, I just told you, around the country and around the globe, these are people in real estate. Now, some of us are at a certain level. Other of us are at a lower level. Other of us at the highest level. But when you call a CCIM, We've all done something that no corporation can say. C.B. Richard Ellis, Caldwell Banker Commercial, pick a big brand across the country. They may be big. They may be in every market. But when you pick up the phone, you're generally, they're calling the reputation of the company. But when you call a CCIM, you know that even if that CCM's in a company, they have achieved and shown that they have met a minimum criteria of expertise and experience. And that is huge. So call another CCIM, you're all in the club. And there is a tremendous courtesy, tremendous respect that I find that CCIM to CCIM, no matter where it is, they have for each other. And so I'll share with you, I'm gonna get yanked in a second, but I'll share with you, <laughs> I'll share with you just, uh, some of you may have heard this story and every, uh, lately it seems every month I've got a new story, but sometimes it's not as much money, so I'll go back to the big ones. Um, so I tell this little story. I was in the leadership of my CCM chapter, new neophyte in the group. And, uh, and in our market, the CCMs were pretty much the, the better practitioners. So I was humbled to be a part of it. And when they said, you know, somebody want to be secretary, I said, sure. You know, I'll write the notes for the meeting, you know. But I, that was an opportunity for me to go through the, it was a little card box at the time, actually. I mean, I'm not that old, but I mean, it was just cards. Computers were new and CompuServe and AOL were the internet, right? So. Uh, I went through and I called everybody. And I had a reason to call them though. And these are people in the business. But I called them because I was involved in CCIM and can you come to this event or can you help us out? Can you do this? Totally non-threatening. Well, guess what happened? I ended up with about 75 personal relationships with people doing business in the market. I didn't call them because I was doing a deal. But I warmed up that opportunity for when that deal may come along. And then when I started getting involved on a national basis, I kind of handled this the same way. 
Somebody's talking about something, hey, let me go talk on the side. I do this, you do this, where's their opportunity? Well, just by volunteering, I was in a room doing chapter business, and that put me with a, a it was a political context, legislative affairs, put me in a room with a guy. I don't know him from anything other than he's a politician and he wants money. So, but after the meeting, he said, look, I just got a new job across the street. I work for an architect and engineering firm, and, and I want to go see the office. It's a really nice office. So this is a regional group. They have like 30,000 square feet. They just moved in. This guy is the PR guy. So he, go, he brings us to the office. We're walking through the hallways, and I meet his boss, the guy with the name on the sign. And I say, hey, Bob, you know, we get talking. Well, it turns out I spent about 500 grand with them on an economic development project over the course of a couple of years and built a nice relationship. But I did it at the top. And I was at the top of that company and built that relationship at the top because I was there for CCIM. Think about it. And I give credit to that. Now, obviously, you've got to be good at what you do. You have to add value. You have to have something to talk about. But it turns out that after working with this guy for a while, that relationship teed me up to another relationship. And that was that some guy in California bought this crazy $12 million land assemblage in the middle of nowhere. And he was flying out and back and forth and needed somebody to do the deal. Well, that architect referred me to that deal. Okay. That ended up being a two-year contract, and we took that land and went from $11 million to $33 million in two years and sold that piece of property. That relationship today is still giving for me, all right? Turns out those guys I was working with are the guys that just took down the hostess portfolio, about 140 units last month. Anybody tracking that? So, it's, so really what that means is he's got a bunch of junk all over the country. But nonetheless, you know, there's opportunity in every situation, and, and my opportunity was because I was in CCIM, and it put me in with a bunch of people that if I just sit at my desk and do what I do every day, and I don't apply the skills, and I don't think out of the box, I would have never created that opportunity. And that's how I started doing the bigger, better deals and making more money. So I encourage you all, you're all here, which is great. The issue is, what are you going to do with what you did here today? When you get a card, are you going to call that person? Are you going to link into somebody and then follow them? Are you going to communicate with them? Do something else with it. But when you're all in the same CCIM pile, Remember that that's the excuse you have every time to pick up the phone and make that call and create that opportunity for yourself.